Hey everyone, just got done at the office and want to have a quick chat. I'm going to do my best to keep this social media compliant. So bear with me as I have to say a few things along the way. But I'm going to try to be concise here. We argue a lot over masks, right? Do we or don't we mask? Um, if someone doesn't mask, are they risking everybody else's lives? And, and, you know, do we social distance or not? Should the kids go back to school? Those are all big discussions right now. I want to, I want to change the focus of this a little bit, at least for a minute. And I want you to think about what you can do for yourself so that what other people are doing or not doing becomes much less relevant and much less important to you. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of things I want you to focus on for your own health so that you are more resistant to getting COVID or to having a bad case of COVID um, and you're less likely to need major intervention should you, at, should you end up getting it, which a lot of us eventually will, if not this year, then next year. So number one, and these are not cures. Let me be clear. I'm not saying any of this cures COVID. I'm not saying any of this is, is treatment for COVID or will keep you from getting it. And I'm not making specific recommendations to you. I'm not your doctor. These are general recommendations, general health to, to boost your immune system. Um, and University of, or I think it was Washington University in St. Louis uh, just published, I saw it today. It probably came out in the past few days that they have this new idea that maybe if we make your immune system healthier, you won't get nearly as sick. Which is kind of what all the functional medicine people and nutrition people have been saying all along. But anyway, number one, work on your vitamin D level. Call your doctor or, or whatever practitioner you use for blood work or go into uh, one of these labs where you can ask for your own blood work and get a vitamin D test. D is in David. It's called a 25 hydroxy vitamin D test minimum on that test should be 30. Ideally should probably be over 50. Check with your doctor to make sure for you. But for many um, nutritionists and, and functional medicine doctors, 60 to 90 or 70 to 90 is kind of the sweet spot on that test. If you're low in vitamin D, if you're not in whatever range your doctor wants you to be in, they will likely give you oral D3. Now, in many cases, it'll have a little bit of K with it, K2. It may be a mix of a couple Ks. But that makes the vitamin D work better. Most people can do fine with that. A few people with certain clotting issues or on certain medications should be careful about taking the vitamin K. Again, check with your doctor, check with your practitioner, but get your vitamin D levels up where they need to be. There is very good evidence that that is a meaningful way to increase the effectiveness of your immune system. So you either get the virus and don't notice it or get the virus and have a very mild case but your chances of either dying from it or ending up in ICU with it are dramatically wet less when your vitamin D level is up where it needs to be. Number two, zinc. Very important to get your zinc levels up where they need to be. It's a little more difficult to test. You can do a blood test called an alkaline phosphatase. It is not generally for zinc, um, but on the low end of alkaline phosphatase, low end of normal, you likely have somewhat of a zinc deficiency. If it is below the laboratory normal range, you most likely have a zinc deficiency. You can also test it by doing what's called a zinc taste test. And there are several companies um, that make a zinc test solution. You can get a bottle of this, it's pretty cheap. You can use it with your family. Little bit of it, throw it in your mouth, swish it around for 15 or 20 seconds. If you immediately get kind of a nasty metallic taste, you probably have plenty of zinc. The less you taste it, the more deficient you likely are, all the way to saying, oh my gosh, this tastes pretty much like water. Obviously you have a significant deficiency. Dosages of zinc can run anywhere from a couple uh, hundred uh, milligrams a day, or I'm sorry, um, 10 to, to 30 milligrams a day, 50 is kind of a mid-range dose, all the way up to 80 to 100 milligrams a day um, that some people will do if you're sick or if you're really grossly deficient check with your doctor or practitioner to see which type of zinc and what dosage is correct for you, okay? Not making a specific recommendation for you. A third thing to consider is your glutathione level. Again, not perfect the, to test. Uh, you can do a blood test for it, it's okay. Um, it gives you an indication. You can take glutathione and there is some evidence that, well, there's some evidence that glutathione deficiency makes you much more likely to have a, a bad case of COVID. Um, and there are some researchers who have actually come out and, and stated pretty boldly that they think it is the determinant as to whether you have a severe case or not. Um, not everybody agrees with that. So there is some controversy over it, but consider it 
likely important. So with a glutathione level, we make that in our liver. It's a natural antioxidant. Um, so you can take oral glutathione. A lot of times it doesn't do you any good. You can take oral glutathione in a form called liposomal, and I'm pronouncing it carefully so you can find it, or lipospherical. Those two forms of oral glutathione are pretty effective. Those do get in your system and raise your levels. Otherwise, IV or injection are options. You can also take a supplement called N-acetylcysteine, or N-A-C for short, like Nancy Adam Charles. That is one step removed from glutathione. We create glutathione directly from N-acetylcysteine. It also has some of its own benefits, even if it doesn't become glutathione right away in you. But that's an effective way and, and really pretty cost effective to raise your glutathione levels. Um, so for those three things that I just mentioned, vitamin D, zinc, and glutathione, get those, go get them tested. Um, talk to your practitioner, get your levels up where they need to be. Great way to boost your immune system and get your body more resistant to this. Do that for you so you worry less about what other people are doing. Last two things, blood sugar. Have your fasting insulin level checked um, along with the fasting blood sugar. You can do an A1C if you want to. Um, the triglycerides sometimes are kind of a surrogate marker for blood sugar, but the combination of fasting insulin and fasting blood sugar is a really great way to know if you're becoming insulin resistant. And that's where a lot of risk lies in all of this, having in this elevated um, insulin level, kind of pro-inflammatory, um, not great for your immune system. You also have elevated blood sugar in many cases, and that, that really is a major comorbidity for this. So if you get those tested, your doctor can calculate something called a HOMA-IR, H-O-M-A hyphen I-R. It's an insulin, insulin resistant score um, to see how bad you are with that. Um, what do you do about it? There are medications that your doctor can give you. There are herbs and nutrients that your natural practitioner can give you. There are diets that you can go on. I would say general recommendation, go to Amazon or whatever retailer you like and get a book called Whole30, W-H-O-L-E, Whole30. Read that, follow that, give yourself a month of Whole30. It's basically gonna be a month not eating any sugar or not consuming any sugar. Um, most of you can do that. Again, read the book, make sure you fall into a category that can handle it, talk to your doctor, talk to your practitioner, but consider doing something like that to kind of reset the way you handle blood sugar. Um, some people do fasting, some people just change their diet generally. Whole30 is a nice middle even uh, way to go. All right, not too extreme, but still gonna be meaningful. And then lastly, eat real whole food and get some good sleep. Those are another couple of really important tips. Go to the farmer's market, go to a decent grocery store, get organic fruits and vegetables, get some grass-fed meat or, or wild-caught fish. Eat real food. Stop eating processed junk. Get off the alcohol, get off the sugar. Give your, your body a break from that and actually be healthy. Consider this. If you were just told that you had cancer, if you were just told that you had your first heart attack, what things would you change in your life? right? You would eat better. You would take better care of yourself. You would start exercising. You would get some sleep. You would all of a sudden pay attention to that because it became very real to you, right? Your life is at risk. You should take those kinds of actions now to boost your immune system and get rid of some of the comorbidities that are going to make you much more vulnerable to this. If you do that, you can spend a lot less time and energy worrying about what the person next to you is doing and whether or not they're wearing their mask and you don't have to go on social media and everybody doesn't have to argue with each other, right? Whether you're a masker or a non-masker, I get both sides, right? I get it, I really do. And there are people out there that are, are truly at greater risk than others, right? People with, with problems that they have very little control over. Those people also need to do what I'm talking about because at least they can get rid of other layers of risk and the only risk they have is the big one that they can't control, right? Everything else is, is pretty much covered and taken care of. So please pay attention to this. I've tried to be as responsible and compliant as I can with this, right? I've made no claim to cure, no claim to treatment. I just want you to be healthy enough that you do well with this. Okay, so take some personal responsibility. They should have been shouting this from day one. Go see your doctor, go get tested, get these things taken care of. 
If you can't tell, I'm a little frustrated with this. So pass this around, share it with your friends, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. We can have a discussion about it. You don't have to agree with me. Um, but let's pass this around and get some actual useful information out there that can change some people's lives and change some people's risk. All right, let me know what you think. Hope this served you well, and I hope you had a great day. Talk to you soon.